Hello and welcome to class. Let's talk about matching values in two different form inputs using JavaScript. So as you can see, I already have an empty form tag. And let's begin with a label. The user instructions will be word one. And then we're going to have a basic input. Type equals text, ID equals word one, and it will be required. We could add more attributes to this input, but we're going to keep it simple for this tutorial. Let's copy that label and paste a second one called word two. Remember the ID must be unique, so this will be word two it'll also be required. So if we save that, we can see that we have word one and word two. Let's go to our small and let's add label, display them as blocks. That'll force them to stack like that. The last thing we're going to need in our HTML is the ability to send a message back to our user. And for that, we use a division with an ID it will be an empty division at this point. We'll next open up our script and grab a reference to the ID for word one, the ID for word two, and the ID for feedback. So this is what those three query selectors will look like, W1, W2, and feedback, which match W1, W2, and feedback. Okay, next thing we're going to do is add an event listener to the second input. The event listener will be focus out. In other words, when you click the mouse outside of the box, and we're going to call a function called control R. That's a Spanish word, I'm not sure I said it right function, and we use this exact same word. And to make sure it's working, we're going to start with a console log. And we'll just send a message inside the function. Let's come down here. Let's click in the second one, and then click out. And look at that, our message inside the function is working. So line five is calling the function on line seven. There's two possibilities. First possibility is that the word one and word two match. The other possibility is that they don't. A basic if else function looks like this. Word one dot value is not strictly equal to word two dot value, then we'll send a message that the values do not match. Otherwise, values match. So there we've got a well-formed if else. Now let's come over here. Let's type high and high. Now let's click outside. Yay, we have a match. Hello, click outside. We have no match. So the if else function is working beautifully. Well, we don't wanna send messages to the console. That's a debugging function that you should use as you build your code. What we really wanna want have happen is if they don't match, we wanna erase the value for word one and erase the value for word two. So what does that look like? Well, if we come up to line one, we've got word one dot value, and we can simply set it equal to nothing. And then we can say word two dot value is also equal to empty. Let's try that. So if they do not match high, click outside, you can see that they're both erased instantly. 
Well, we want to have the user start back over at word one. That's called a focus. So we'll do word one dot focus. That means put the cursor back in word one. So once again, we'll have a mismatch. Click outside and the focus returns to the top word. Great. Well, we also want to have some sort of a message. Remember back here, we have a division with an idea of feedback. So after we get through erasing stuff, we want to tell the user why we did it. So let's do feedback, which we can see from line three, dot text content equals, and then we can put a message in here. Values do not match. Try again. Okay, so we'll come back. The values do not match. Click, there we go. There's our error message. Well, that doesn't really pop. So I'm gonna to return to the small CSS, and I'm gonna say pound feedback. As you remember, this has an ID of feedback. And we can just simply set the color to red. Hopefully you'll get a little bit more fancy with yours, but there it is. So let's refresh it. Try that again, where we do not match. Values do not match. Now, what if they do match? Uh-oh, this message is still there. Hmm. So let's go to our scripts. What do we need to do down here under the else? Well, we can set the feedback dot text content equal to empty. In other words, erase the value that's there. So we'll start with a mismatch and then we'll start with a match and the feedback is erased because everything is now correct. The last thing you'd need to do is of course comment out these console logs because they're just a debugging thing. And now we can run it or run an error and everything works beautifully.